Hello, I'm Atuba George and today is Friday. Praise God. I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, all week we've been just receiving God's word and some important things. I pray that the Spirit of God will guide your heart. Now, that's why we bring the word of the Lord to you. And we've been sharing on the being the image of God. But before we go into today's broadcast, can we make request for our daily bread? Are you ready? It's your right. It's your right. Praise God. You know, sometimes people think asking, um, asking of the Lord, like, I don't want to bother God. God have given me hands. God have given me. You don't realize that what is His to give to you, he's got to be faithful to give it. It has nothing to do with whether you do well or you don't do well. God is a responsible father and he gives to his children. Praise God. And, and Jesus told us, hey, make requests for your daily bread. You know, David had said to us, you know, that's the thing about the word of God. It's not new. There's nothing that jumps out today and say, oh, this is everything you cannot trace. There's a problem with it. If, a, if an understanding cannot be traced to, with, to see the character of God in it, both in what we call the Old and the New Testament. You see, so you look at the, the law, you look at the Psalms, and then you look at the teachings of Jesus. You must combine these three things together because Jesus didn't come to teach anything new. He didn't. See, he didn't. He only come to bring us into that covenant so that that which God have spoken before now will be fulfilled. You know, for example, Jesus died and, and, and he, he came so that the blessing of Abraham might be fulfilled in us. You see, so he's gone now. It's gone to heaven, Jesus, I mean. But then, where is the position of the blessing of Abraham? Oh, Abraham's blessings are mine. That's why we sing that song. Really? Where is the blessing of Abraham in your life? See? So you may confess these things, but not walk in them. But why we teach the word of the Lord and bring these things down so that you can relate with them is so that in active action, you can begin to participate in, in, in the blessings of Abraham. So David lets us know, hey, God daily loads us with benefits. So he, he, he just said, God daily. And then we quote those things. Then Jesus comes and says, when you pray, tell God to give you this day our daily bread. Mm -hmm. David said, God daily loads us with benefits. It's an information. It's an information. Now, we may not have known why he said that, but he must have experienced God enough to be able to make that statement. And see, he wasn't requesting. He just, he just made a statement of truth. He daily loads us with benefits. And another time he said, Bless the Lord of my soul and do not forget all his benefits. See? And Jesus comes and says, You make requests to be given your daily bread. They were talking about the same thing. But Jesus brought into an active form for us. See, so if you don't ask, you will not receive. And when you don't receive, your joy may never be full. So I say, but I don't need daily bread. My, my job is good enough. You don't understand what we're talking about. We're not talking about those. The gospel is not for poor people. The gospel is not for those that don't have jobs. No, people have this funny mentality. And you Christians, you know, because you're not doing well, that's why you need God in your life. Really? Really? See, there is an end to everything that we do. There is an end to everything that we're involved with. If whatever you have is not from the Lord, I assure you this, your end will not be great. Your end doesn't matter what you have today. Your end, see, you may be wealthy today, 
But in that world, you cannot, I'm not talking about, ah, it's God now, it's God now, you know. Even a thief can say it's God. If it's not God, then God would not allow, wouldn't have allowed him to succeed in his city. So anybody can attribute what they have to God. But you see, in all sincerity, if you cannot act, attribute your progress to number one thing, the word of the Lord. You see that? Number two, the sustenance of that thing is done by the word of the Lord then you cannot guarantee that the end of that thing will be by the word of the Lord. See? So when God gives instructions, it's important you follow them closely. So whether you have or you don't have, it's on you to follow the teachings and instructions of Jesus. So Jesus said we should make this request every day. Are you ready for that now? Join me in faith. And say, Father, I make a demand today for my daily bread. And I receive it from your hands. Thank you, Lord, for loving me and being a faithful father. Therefore, I receive what you have released for me today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. And it doesn't stop there. Have great expectations. Praise God. Now we've been talking about being in the image of God. See, the intention of God from the very beginning in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, when he spoke and said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. That's the intention of God. But you, are you becoming the image and likeness of God? You see, I was sharing, I, I think I touched on this last week. Adam and Eve were not in the image and likeness of God. They were completely far from it. They were far from it. And that's because when God made them, the Bible says Adam was made, Adam became a living soul. A living soul and a spirit, they are not the same thing. Now, you know, people just like to argue. Oh, um, it's, a, it's not the same thing. And God was specific, not because there was no words to call spirit then. There was. See, but man was not made a spirit being. Man didn't have a spirit. See, so Adam was made a living soul. But what did God say when he made man? Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So did God change his mind along the way? No, he didn't. You know, that's the problem. God speaks a word here. And then he takes the first step. And you think that should be the full fulfillment of God's word. No, it doesn't work that way. See, the word of the Lord takes process. Everything goes. Now, that's why I, I, I've, I have to tell you this. That Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2 wasn't speaking the same thing. Genesis chapter 1 spoke of God creating things. See. And Genesis chapter 2 speaks about how things were created. So, yeah, what did I say? <laughs> I'll tell you. So, in Genesis chapter 1, how did God create things? He created them by speaking. God did not move one pin. There was no wind blowing and, and shaping things in Genesis chapter 1. No. Guess what? God rested after he created. But when God rested, everywhere was still dark and water was just over everywhere until God rested. So don't think God created. Oh, but the Bible says, and God saw. He didn't see the physical thing he created. What God saw, when the Bible says, and God saw that it was good. God was looking at the, remember the first thing God said was, let there be light, okay? And that light wasn't the sunlight, it wasn't the moon, it wasn't the stars. That light was the production of his plan. 
That was the light. Say, so I let there be light, and there was light. It wasn't sun that came out so you could see everywhere. No, everywhere was still dark. But see, in that darkness, the plan that he had in his heart right from the beginning came before him. No, like an architectural model. And that model is kept and someone looks at it and like, wow, this, this, this house is going to be so beautiful. And that's what came before the Lord. Okay. And then God began to speak. Now, you see, even God had to call forth a template. He wasn't just speaking out from his mind or say anything. No, he had to speak from a template. So that's what God was looking at and then commanding it to be so on this earth. Okay, so he saw the template. He saw, okay, there was space. Now these were things God had taken years and years to meditate on. Are you getting what I'm saying? Before he started speaking. And that's why sometimes there's no much power in our speaking because we don't even meditate on it. So when we speak, we speak out of impulsion. No, we speak from the place of truth, the depth of truth. And when we speak, that's why the, Jesus said that when you speak, you should believe that those things which you say will come to pass. You don't flippantly say things and you expect them to come to pass. You, you begin to expect every one of your words to come to pass when you've learned how to align your word to be one with you. So you don't speak to them tomorrow. You say, but you said this in air. Eh, really, did I say it? Uh, someone said, but you said something yesterday. Really, what did I say concerning this thing? Um, can you remind me what that is? No. See, when your mind and heart, when you, when you align with yourself, if you say a word, you don't even have to remember what you said because this is what happened. Anytime you look at that situation, that's the same thing you see. That's what it means by speaking truth. So your, your, your heart aligns with God's heart. Now you've seen the picture, the lights. The moment you see that picture, and that's what every believer, that's what you're called to do. But then we're not talking today about your works now. We're talking today about your being, your personality. Who are you? And so God didn't create Adam and Eve in his image and in his likeness, but he began the process. See? And this is the work of the Holy Spirit. When you read Genesis chapter 2, see, and the Lord God, see? Now, when you read the Lord God, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, it was the Holy Spirit that was doing every work on the earth. So the trees, everything you see that came out, came out of there were all done by the work of the Holy Spirit. The God, the one we refer to as the Father, He has finished doing His work. He has spoken, done everything, rested. So you don't see Him again. But guess what? You know, Hebrews say, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. So, there was the speaking and there was the Word. See? And then the Holy Spirit, having received the word, is the one walking on the details of everything that was spoken. And so we have this beautiful thing. But then Adam and Eve, Adam was formed, became a living soul. Eve was created from the rib of Adam. But they were both living souls. But then you find that tree God placed in the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That tree was placed in the garden. Then there was another tree called the tree of life. And that tree of knowledge of good and evil, I told you, I think I told you last week, it was a normal tree. There was nothing in that tree that would make you know good and evil. Nothing. But you see, the tree was a mark that the day they were going to eat on that tree, the day they were going to, that day, God was going to call for a feast when they have obeyed him enough. Now, the feasting of that tree was the day God would have given to Adam and Eve a spirit. Yes. 
Now, what's the work of the Spirit? What's the Holy Spirit supposed to do? That's the day Adam and Eve would have received the Holy Spirit. And that's the continuation of God's creation, making them in what he said, image and his likeness. But they never got there. They never got there. They ate the tree before the appointed time. They couldn't keep the commands of the Lord in obedience. Now, the same, so they lost that opportunity. And guess when that opportunity came again? The disciples of Jesus on the day of Pentecost. Now, you see, that day of Pentecost was actually a, a period of feast. I think they called, the original name of that, that season was the Feast of Weeks. There was a feast taking place in Jerusalem where all Jews must gather in Jerusalem. And that's why the place was filled with Jews from different parts of the world. And so, you know, they, usually they'll come with their friends and all that and all that. So God chose the D-Day of that feast. And when the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. So Jesus did with his disciples what God was doing with Adam and Eve. Giving them instructions per time. Giving them instructions per time. He sent them out with power. They went, healed the sick and came back. Wow! Oh, don't rejoice. Rejoice rather that your name is written in heaven. There was a reason Jesus said that. But he watched them obey him. He watched them obey him. Then Satan came and tried Peter. Peter shook, but still stood in faith. Yeah. And Jesus now said, hey guys, tarry in Jerusalem until you receive the Holy Ghost. Don't do anything. Because for them to start walk, they must know the difference between good and evil. Man didn't know it before this time. Until that day, the full day of the feast came, the Holy Ghost came. And guess what? The Holy Ghost didn't just come on the, the, the 120 disciples. Now, that's what a lot of people have not realized. The Holy Ghost came that day. And everyone that was devout received the Holy Ghost. So when the Bible said they were speaking in tongues and there were some men who said, how come we hear them in our languages glorifying God? Now, now you see, that's the thing. They were not hearing them in their languages. What was going on is those same people received the Holy Ghost and they were receiving interpretation of the tongues. Those people who received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues were saying, so it wasn't like someone was speaking Le perete poroko siya. Ah, that is a Ethiopian language. Oh. Ah, I, can, I can understand what he said. 120 people acting like drunk men, speaking in other tongues. How will you pick what each, one, each person is saying? So they were not speaking languages like people think. The men who heard them were receiving, they didn't know because they were not taught. Jesus had taught these 120 people, you know, but these ones were not taught, they were never taught. So there was this confusion, come, something is happening. Now that's why when Peter preached, it was so easy to get 3,000 people saved. They were not trying to like, okay, this is new. They all knew something had happened. They've all gotten saved before Peter preached. But they didn't know. It's the same thing with Cornelius. You remember, Peter didn't have to lead them to Christ. He didn't have to say, now, lift up your hands if you want to receive Jesus Christ. Father, we receive, oh, into our heart. Hey, no. The Bible while Peter was, you know, Peter was still preaching and saying, Jesus came and he did this and he did that and he did that. Suddenly, the Holy Ghost filled the place and they began to speak in other tongues, you see. So God didn't need them to pray the sinner's prayer before the Holy Ghost came. The same thing on the day of Pentecost. God didn't need them to come. The Holy, when the Holy Ghost descended, he descended in, indeed. Praise God. He came on the day of a feast. The same way he would have come in the Garden of Eden on the day of a feast. 
Now they know the difference between good and evil. They were ready to carry out the assignment and deal with the enemy. So one of the vital points or things, we're going to enter into this um, as we progress. One of the vital things that it's so important as your, as your work as a child of God, having received the Holy Ghost, is your ability to discern between good and evil. That's so vital to God because that aligns your heart to the very truth of heaven. The very truth of God. You must align, you must know what is good and what is evil. I'm not talking about the one your brain does. I'm talking about the one only the Holy Spirit can open your understanding to see. And that should be your number one focus, especially this month. You see, I'm sharing these things with you now. This should be your main concern. How well do I discern good and evil? God has given you his spirit. Now you have the ability to grow indeed into his image and his likeness. The question is, what are you doing with it? Are you just living life anyhow, like whatever will be, will be? No, sir. What are you becoming? With your marriage, with the challenges that you face, with your job, what are you becoming? If it's not the image of God, you're losing your soul. I pray for you today. That the Spirit of God will help you massively. Help you greatly. Turn your attention to His truth. And that the knowledge of good and evil will be evident in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you and have the best weekend ever. Bye.